In this lesson, the student will apply strategies to subtract with zeros in the minuend. The subtraction equation shown is composed of three numbers. We don't use these labels often or with students, but I wanted to clarify the learning objective. At this point, students will be asked to choose a strategy of their choice to solve subtraction problems. In previous lessons and past grade levels, students have already explored many ways to solve problems and developed an understanding of place value and the relationship between addition and subtraction. Shown here are four examples of strategies that students may use to solve a subtraction problem. Using numbers in context or in a word problem helps students think about how to solve a problem. For example, let's say that a boy, Joseph, wanted to buy a new mountain bike for an upcoming adventure club trip. The mountain bike that Joseph wants costs $300. He has saved $234 so far. How much more money does he need? Let's use our strategies. The constant difference strategy is set up with a vertical equation, but I'm going to change the numbers because subtracting across zeros often causes students to make errors. I'm going to subtract one way from 300 first and write the changed amount of 299 here. Then to be consistent, I'll subtract one away from the 234 amount as well and record the new number of 233 below the 299. Now subtracting will be easier. 9 minus 3 equals 6, 90 minus 30 equals 60, and finally 200 minus 200 equals 0. You don't have to record the 0, but some students might, and it doesn't change the answer. But before we go to the next model or strategy, I want to go back to the idea of solving this equation mentally. To do calculations in your head, it can help to make the numbers friendlier. I can change the numbers each by one easily enough in my head to the 299 minus 233 and I can think there won't be any hundreds left and 99 minus 33 is easy. I can do that one in my head, 66. Joseph only needs $66. The most important piece to this strategy is to change both numbers by the same amount so that the difference between the two numbers remains constant. An open number line is a very useful strategy and easy to use with a counting up strategy. It allows us to be flexible with our numbers too. I started by drawing my line with arrows and making my starting point with a hash mark labeled $234 to represent where Joseph is with his money. And then down the line, I can mark the total of $300. The distance between the two numbers will tell us how much more money Joseph needs. I'll be counting up from $234 and I'll start by thinking of making a 10. I can count up two different ways. I can count up by ones and record six jumps to 240, or if I know that six more will get me to 240, I can label one jump with a six. Now, there are so many options. I could make a jump of 60 because I can add in my head 240 plus 60 to jump to the $300, or I could make jumps or add up by ones, fives, tens, but I think I'll show 20s. With each jump of 20, I'll make another hash mark and label the new amount. My first 20 moves us to 260, then the next one, 280, and finally to our last, our last 20 takes us to 300. I can add all my jumps to see that they total $66, which is the same as our constant difference answer. Not all subtraction problems lend themselves to using the counting up strategy, but this one worked nicely. Our final two strategies I'll model simultaneously because the base 10 notation is just a recording of the base 10 regrouping. Most families won't have base 10 blocks around the house and you don't have to go out and purchase any. I'll show you how your students will learn to write the blocks out too. I'm going to begin with placing my 300 on the place value mat. Each flat represents 100, and I'll record that 300 here on my recording sheet. I'm going to write out my equation 300 minus 234 vertically. If I look back at my place value mat and base 10 blocks, I don't have anything in the tens or ones, so I'll need to do some regrouping. I'll first take one flat and trade it 
for 10 tens because there are 10 tens in 100 and place those 10 rods in my tens column. Then I need to take one of the 10 rods and trade it for 10 ones and place them in my ones column on the mat. Let's check our total and make sure I still have 300 here. Good, I have all 300 still here, just regrouped to make the subtracting easier. I need to tend to my base 10 notation though. We can see that the base 10 notation looks like what we're used to, but the base 10 blocks and regrouping show the true value of the numbers and how to explain what the notation means. With my notation, I begin with taking 100 away from the 300. So I'll cross that out and write a 2, and then a 1 next to my middle 0. Then I took 110 away from the 10s and placed 10 ones in the 1s. I'll cross off the 10 and record a 9 because there are 9 10s remaining, and I'll record a 1 next to the 0 to signify 10 ones. Now, going back to our base 10 blocks, We'll take away a value of 234 blocks from our base 10 blocks. I can take 200 or two blocks here, three tens from here, and finally four ones from here. Counting our remaining base 10 blocks, I find I have 66. In this lesson, students have been asked to choose a strategy to solve a subtraction problem with zeros in the minuin. They could choose one of the four strategies discussed or another of their own design. Accuracy is important, more important than using one particular strategy. A student is successful when they are able to solve a subtraction problem using one of the strategies shown or another of their own design without errors and is able to explain their work.